So, you know, in the science of mind, we teach that the universe that we inhabit is abundant. And the universe is trying to bring us what we desire. Uh, I think most everything we want, most everything, is here for, for the asking. You know, I think we have to believe it's so. I think we have to ardently, really, really desire it and also be willing to accept it. Now, I think many people have been programmed for lack and scarcity somewhere along the line. And what I mean by that is that kind of thinking that says there's not enough to go around and it's selfish to have enough when others do not. And life is about hard work and sacrifice and struggle and it's more spiritual to be poor. Well, we disagree with all of that in the science of mind. Uh, that all of those things we would say those are false beliefs. And they're based on a lack of understanding of how the universe actually works. So that thinking does not serve anyone. It doesn't serve you, it doesn't serve me, it doesn't serve other people. It limits uh, all of us from realizing our natural state of prosperity. You know that, yes, people in the world struggle, absolutely. We are not denying that at all. But we also, I think, uh, do not need to perpetuate that by agreeing with that kind of belief, that kind of thinking, that that has to be so. Well, you know, there's always got to be somebody at the bottom of the food chain. We don't have to agree with that kind of thinking. See, we live in an abundant, abundant universe. There is enough, there is more than enough to go around. You ever been to the beach and you're walking in the sand or sitting in the sand and you think, God, you know, there's a lot of sand here, isn't there? I mean, there's like way more sand than there needs to be for the beach to be a terrific place to be. Because God has created an abundant universe. We are all meant to have enough. I absolutely believe that. That's spiritual principle. We are meant, we are intended, divinely intended, to have enough and more than enough. I think after our basic needs are met, I think the experience of abundance has to do more with experiencing our creative gifts in satisfying ways and learning to give and receive in a balanced way and it's about letting our light shine the way we are divinely intended to do. So I would ask you this morning, do you hold yourself back by not sufficiently believing in the possibility of a more abundant and prosperous existence for yourself and, and for everyone, everyone you know, your parents, your children, your grandchildren? Do you believe sufficiently in the possibility of prosperity? And part of what that is is we know that there is within them everything they need. No matter what their outer story is right now today, no matter how goofed up their life may look or what difficulty they seem to be dealing with, we know in, as students of science of mind that there is a principle and a power and a presence within them that supports them in expressing life abundantly. That there is a presence within them that supplies absolutely everything they need and they are completely capable right now. See, I think viewing people that way is one of the greatest gifts we can give to them. So can you realistically imagine yourself as a successful, satisfied, fulfilled person? And you may say, well, I am that already. In which case, great. And can, can you expand that even further to being even more fulfilled? Mm -hmm. See, on a daily basis, can you see the goodness and uh, the beauty and the abundance that is all around you? See, I think it's important that we not miss that. You know, that even though I know we all have things we'd like to accomplish or experience or have in our life, it doesn't mean that our existence right now isn't surrounded by goodness and beauty and abundance, because it is. And recognizing that is part of what paves the way for increase. You know, can you imagine a world where everyone could be flourishing, a world where everybody is somehow thriving, a world where everybody is prospering? See, I think we have to have this context for the world that we, that, that, um, we live in, that this world is a good place to be. And it can work for everybody. Or, I think if we don't believe that, if we don't really know deep within our own heart and soul that this world is a good place to be and it can work for everybody, then we're going to have difficulty, I think, in creating what we want. You know, because, why is this so? Because I think people are basically good, people are basically loving. And most will not allow themselves to have 
what they want as long as they believe that we're depriving other people. But like I've said to you in recent weeks, your success, your abundance, your prosperity does not deprive anyone. In fact, actually what it does is it acts like a lamp to show them what's possible, and it gives them the opportunity to also raise up. Your doing well blesses the world. Isn't it a good thing that you can pay your bills? Yes, go like this. Yes, yes it is. It's a wonderful thing. You know, isn't it a good thing that you buy services and products out there, and then that means that other people get employed? That's a wonderful thing. You know, so having what you want in life, I think, contributes to the um, general state of human happiness on the whole planet, right? And it supports other people in creating more happiness for themselves as well. I think we have to have a healthy attitude toward money and abundance and prosperity. And what I notice is a lot of people don't. A lot of people, their attitude seems to be very, very tainted. So, you know, the power to bring about positive, constructive change in our world, in our life, science of mind teaches us, is not about externals. The power to bring about positive, constructive change in our life exists within us. You know, just more is, is not the goal, I would say. You know, using it to do what has heart and meaning, I think, leads us to doing what we came here to do spiritually. You know? Um, that struggle is not God's will for us. Lack is not God's will for us. I believe that God loves you and God wants only the best for you. And my encouragement is for each of us to drink that in and hold that and remind ourselves that on a daily basis, that God loves me and God wants only the best for me. That doesn't mean God doesn't want the best for every other man, woman, and child on the planet because God does. You know? So struggle does not glorify God. Lack does not glorify God. God is glorified, I believe, when you stand up and acknowledge who you are, that you are the sons and daughters of the Most High. You know, you are a child of God, a person who deserves to have every good thing that life has to offer. I believe that that's the truth for each and every one of us. I do. You know, so the, you know, the hardest spiritual practice to master in the Old Testament comes right at the very end of the Old Testament. It comes in Malachi, and it is the practice of tithing giving back to God one-tenth of what you receive. Now, I know this spiritual practice does not come easy for everyone, that it brings up resistance pretty much like nothing else. Yep, it's a good one. You can count on it. You know, people say, well, what do you find people have resistance to? Ah, tithing. Absolutely. I get it. I get it. I really do. Why? Because there is this universal doubt that surrounds the world, that surrounds all of us, that's always saying there is not enough. There's not enough to go around. You don't have enough. You're not going to have enough. You know, you've struggled before. You'll struggle again, on and on and on. So just let me give you the little verse from Malachi. And again, this is the hardest thing to master in all of the Old Testament. So in Malachi, it says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall be no room, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. All right? So the promise in the scriptures is that if you tithe, God will bless you in return. So tithing is a spiritual law. It's a scriptural promise. Now the thing about scriptural promises is we can use them to build our faith on. All right? So guess um, questions I have asked myself around this are. What if there is something to tithing? I mean, what if this really, really works, right? What if tithing opens me to a more abundant life? What if, what if I miss out because I'm such a know-it-all and a cheapskate? Yeah, what if, what if? So I'll tell you, so this is my personal story where it all turned around for me. Years ago, I was taking class with Terry Cole Whitaker over on the west side at the Wadsworth Auditorium there. And, uh, and she was doing a class on abundance, and that really interested me. And I was sitting right up front and taking notes like a crazy person, you know, because, like, I wanted to get this. I really, really wanted to get this. And she certainly looked like she had it, you know. And uh, so she was talking about tithing, and I raised my hand, and I said, I said the thing you never want to say. I said, I'm sorry, but I can't afford to tithe. And she went, Mark, stand up. So I stood up. She'd say that again. I said, well, I can't afford to tithe. And she said to me in a room full of over 400 people, she said, well, how much money do you make? <laughs> it's like, well, that's a little personal, isn't it? I mean, in front of 400 people? She said, no, 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 come on. How much money do you make? How much money do you make? And I said, well, I make 
this is a while, I make $239 a week. And this is what she said. <laughs> yeah, she laughed. She laughed. She said, well, if you can't tithe and you're not willing to tithe on $239 a week, that is, by the way, $23.90, she said, how do you ever expect the universe to give you more? How do you expect the universe to prosper you in a greater way when you're so miserly with the little bit you have? Now, you have to understand that I was in absolute survival mode at this point in my life. I was just barely making it. In fact, sometimes I was going under, and fortunately, I could spring up and get a breath and then go back under again. You know, I mean, I was really in trouble. I went home that night, and I just hated her. I tell you, I hated her with a passion. I paced around my little unfurnished apartment with such a vengeance, I was not going back to class, and she was a thus and so, and this and that, and da 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 I was just, she didn't know what it was like. I was so mad. I don't know, a few hours into my process, it occurred to me, what if the teaching is right? Oh my God, what if this is the thing? Because I was working like crazy. I thought I was working really hard. Hmm, but but what if, in fact, tithing opens me up to a more abundant life? What if I'm missing out because I'm such a know-it-all? You know how it is when you know what you know and nobody can tell you anything else because you really know. But sometimes there's a greater truth. See, I can believe in God's promise or not. And all, because all of our beliefs are a choice, right? We have the power to choose what we believe. And so I thought, well, 2390. Is it going to be that much worse if I'm letting go of $23.90? And so I started. So I started, and I'm here to tell you that my life got better and better and better. You know, I, we just need enough faith to begin, just to begin somewhere. And so a tithe is a tenth. And where do you give your tithe? To where you're fed spiritually. You know, so I know there are people who come here and they also go to the Catholic Church and the people who come here and they attend a synagogue and there are people who come here and they do other things. Great. Spread the wealth around, you know, if you're being spiritually fed. The purpose, though, and please hear this, this is important, is to acknowledge God is the source of our good and that we are aware and grateful for the good that is in our life, that continues to be flowing in our life. This is why I have to tell people all the time, look, your giving is a spiritual practice. It's like meditating. It's like serving. It's like praying. It's like studying. It's like taking class. Because when you give, the purpose or the point of it is that it should expand our consciousness. Our heart should open a little more, just like we want your wallet to open a little more. Right? So what is the promise? The promise is if we tithe, we prove God in our lives and the windows of heaven open for us. Now, I believe that since I have been tithing, my life has gotten better every year. So thank God I am no longer making just $239.90 a week. There has been great, great progress there. Now, let me say this because people seem to always ask about this. God does not need your money, okay? Think about it. It's already his. Really, it is. It's already his. So tithing is the beginning discipline in giving and receiving. Tithing is one of those things that we do because it increases our faith. Now, I have to say, just start where you are. If you're not on this program, start where you are. And what, so what do you mean by that, Dr. Mark? Be definite. Pick a definite amount and do it consistently. Do that for six months. If you're not homeless and on the street at the end of six months, then you could possibly, possibly increase a little bit more and do that for six months. This is what I mean by be definite and be consistent. You know, I think, I think Jesus has been done a huge disservice by people always talking about, oh, poor Jesus, poor Jesus. See, I don't think that Jesus was poor because Jesus had a consciousness that wherever he went, he knew the needs would be met. Wherever he went, he stayed in the best homes. He ate the best food. He wore the best clothes. You know, when Jesus was being crucified, it says in the Bible that they drew lots for his cloak because he wore the seamless garment. That was the most expensive thing. That was the Louis Vuitton or the Gucci of the day, right? The seamless garment. And that's what Jesus wore. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been gambling for it. If he was poor, he'd be wearing some rag. Nobody'd want it, all right? So Jesus did not, I, I think that Jesus didn't actually teach tithing because 
It was part of his spiritual heritage, and it was taken for granted that he was going to tithe, right? Because that's what people did in that culture, in that teaching at the time. So, you know, the way it works is that we overcome fear by doing something. But you don't go way beyond where your current level of faith is. You just take a little step and see. Okay, you know how it is? And you take a little step. And you, ah, this is my new normal. Okay. So Charles Fillmore, who was the founder of the Unity Movement, he says in his wonderful book called Prosperity, tithing is based on a law that cannot fail. And it is the surest way ever found to demonstrate plenty. For it is God's own law and way of giving. So the way God gives is the way we give. Mm -hmm. I believe, for each and every one of us, with all my heart, I believe that God wants to open the windows of heaven to you and to me, you know, to fill your life with abundance of every good and perfect thing. And you give yourself permission to receive this abundance when you begin to tithe. Let's pray. Yep. So we turn our attention inward for a moment to just recognize that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite, loving, intelligent spirit. It's the most true, most real thing about us. And that spirit is a spirit of abundance. It's a spirit of love, a spirit of wholeness, a spirit of peace. And it exists deep within our being right here, right now. So I claim for each and every one of us that our hearts and minds are wide open to living a more abundant life, that we say yes to God's good, to everything that would add to our life in a wonderful, loving, healthy way. There is nothing in the universe that denies us. And so I know for each and every one of us that God's design for our existence is a design of health and love and prosperity and every good thing. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and our friends and our parents and children, everybody that we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye and we wrap a mantle of God's peace and love around them knowing that they are whole, they are perfect, they are complete right now as they are. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world in which we live, again, knowing the possibility of prosperity and abundance for all people everywhere, that all people could live in sufficiency. We accept this as so, because it all comes from God, that everyone has access to their own inner resources, which are absolutely abundant and infinite in every way. We bless our church, we bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by being together, that there is a raising up in consciousness. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is so. I release this word. I know it's done and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. <laughs>